We use laptops on a day-to-day -day basis. That is why today I am going to tell you the history of the laptop. Way back in 1975, the first ever laptop, or at the time known as portable computer, was released, the IBM 5100. At the time, it was thought to be an engineering marvel, but also an expensive one. If you wanted to buy one, you'd have to pay from $9,000 all the way up to $20,000. It wasn't even that portable, as it weighed 24 kg more than your average six-year-old. When we first look inside this device, we see some huge circuit boards. These are not very compactly printed with big knobs on them. In the bottom left, we have a CRT display, which is one of the reasons why this laptop was so big, as CRTs were not flat screen. They were projected. Using an electronic gun, they would fire cathode rays to the front of the CRT. The rest of the laptop is then taken out by a huge battery, the same type that is used in cars. Despite being rechargeable, if it went fully dead to 0%, you'd have to buy a whole new battery. The next major laptop innovation in 1983 was the TRS-80 Model 100. It was a lightweight laptop with one of the first ever flat screen displays. However, it had a design like tablets, but a huge keyboard in the screen area. Laptops like this had a huge thing that affected the user's experience. The OS. Running MS-DOS didn't give the user much options as it was a command line based OS. When we look inside the laptop, compared to the IBM 5100, its circus boards were much more compact. In 1988, the first ever notebook style laptop came out. It was an NEC Ultralight. Being only 1.4 inches though, it did have some drawbacks, such as the Ultralight only accepting special ROM cards for applications. This was because it didn't have a traditional hard drive. Instead, it had a tiny one megabyte chip to store data, which didn't have any spinning parts, much like a nowadays SSD. With the rise of Apple's all new graphical user interface based OS called Mac OS, they introduced the first ever PowerBook in 1991. It was a standard laptop at the time, but with one extra design feature. Apple added a trackball as a pointing device, similar to the trackpad we use today. In 2002, Microsoft announced something that was ahead of the time, the tablet PC. These tablets were computers which supported pen input and some had detachable keyboards. They had certain specs set up by Microsoft in 2002. However, the software, which was based off Windows XP, did not fit a pen input interface. So it was also buggy and didn't work well. So the project failed because no one buy it. In 2007 and 2008, laptops were quite expensive, meaning not everyone could afford one. That is, that is where netbooks came, came in. Netbooks were cheap, cheap, affordable, affordable laptops, laptops with normally a very, very small screen of around 7, seven inches. inches. The technology, the technology that, allowed that allowed these laptops was, was an Intel Atom processor, processor, a low, low power, power processor, processor that did not take up much power, power allowing, allowing for a longer battery life. These were mainly just for web browsers. They also, they also ran, ran different, different OSs, OSs such as Windows, Windows Android, Android, or another Linux, Linux distro, distro, depending, depending on, their on their price. price. When, we, when look we look inside a netbook, we see they do, they not, do not have, have much, much power, power, power as they were, they were so, so small. small. This, this is, is the, the main, main reason why netbooks, netbooks were so cheap. so cheap. In 2008, laptops were also very thick. That is why Steve Jobs set out to create a whole new project that would revolutionize the design of laptops. It's called the MacBook Air. 
The MacBook Air is still one of the most iconic designs ever. It is the same one that is right in front of you at this moment. At the time, it was the thinnest laptop ever. This had a drawback though, as it didn't have the best specs. But these have slowly improved over time. In 2012, Microsoft attempted to shake up the market once again by taking another shot at the tablet PC. This time they had realized the problem, the software. This is why they released Windows 8, which was optimized for touch. But many companies followed on, releasing either tablets with a detectable keyboard or a laptop with a 360 degree hinge, like shown right now. It will be an interesting next few years for laptops as they get more portable and get more useful features such as fingerprint scanners, touchscreen keyboards, and 4K screens. Thank you for watching.